Hey, hey, top of the morning to you. It's a cool, crisp morning with the sun shining, just creeping through the trees here. Beautiful. I'm having a little tailgate time, reading the word, having a cup of coffee, and uh, I wanted to come out and share with you from Acts chapter 16. I'm doing a <clears throat> study um, in this particular chapter, Paul's second missionary journey, and I'm came across a lady that uh, I don't know if many of you may know, but Lydia. And doing a, you know, just a, a more in-depth study on um, her and her character, her her passions, uh, where she stands with the gospel and uh, how she's progressed um, the gospel. And so I don't know, maybe you have, I think a lot of times those, the uh, people, I call them the shadow people, um, that are uh, kind of in the the back, you know, you got Paul and, and Silas and Barnabas and you got all these Luke and Matthew, all the, you know, the disciples, the leaders that are more forefront and, and uh, other shadow people get a little bit um, uh, askewed on who they were. What was their significance? Because they were the pivotal point in the sharing of the gospel. And so I didn't want to overlook Lydia. And, uh, I, you know, this, this message maybe is to you ladies. Because um, you guys are powerful. And, um, you know, I, I definitely I have a mama that is a powerful mama. Uh, she taught me really how to pray. Uh, she taught me how to stand firm, stand up, and believe. And I'm grateful and thankful for that. So in... Acts chapter 16, it says this, Paul's vision of the man of Macedonia. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region, okay, having been kept by the Holy Spirit. This, to me, I underline this, you might want to also, but having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. The Holy Spirit occasionally will keep you from praying at that moment, keep you from preaching the word, sharing the, um, you know, not to say necessarily, but well, it was. Paul was there to share the gospel, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And, but yet the Holy Spirit was keeping him from it. Why? Because it wasn't time yet. And there was a place and a time for it. We Christians, a lot of times, get oh, extremely zealous. We think every moment, hey, I'm called to go and preach and teach the Great Commission, you know, to carry it throughout the nations. And I've got to do it, and i got to do it now. i got to do it all the time. Don't breathe. You know, every waking moment is it. But you know what? Take time to breathe. Take time to pause. Because the Holy Spirit may want you to withhold that until there is something very significant, this. So when they, uh, I'm going to jump forward to um, 13. So there's Paul, his companions, Luke, you know, Silas. They're on this journey to go and share the gospel, but they're seeking, they're waiting. And then Paul has a dream in, in verse 10. And in that dream, he considers that a vision to get up, get ready, leave for Macedonia, okay, concluding that God had called him now to preach. But still, pause, there's a moment. Uh, verse 13, on the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river, to the place of prayer, expecting to find. Okay, so here they go to this place of prayer outside of the city, to the river, as I've talked about multiple times, find your place of prayer. And we sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. You know, one thing I've found in, um, in life and many years of going to church and being at church is, you know, the women are the ones that are carrying the word. I don't mean that to put us men down, but uh, you know what? We, we need to stand up. We need to... Uh, you know, be better spiritual leaders. And I don't know if we consider it a weakness or what, but, uh, you know, Paul, Silas, we are leaders. And men, we need to stand up. 
women, we thank you for you guys are being passionate and being that, uh, um, you know, emotional uh, counterpoint of just uh, staying connected and being really the spiritual leaders and hanging on to your men. Okay, so one of those listening women was this woman, Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. Okay. Number one, she's a worshiper of God. So God had already de- predestined, he had already planned, he already placed this Lydia there in the place of prayer, doing what she was called to do. But she was a worshiper of God. But why was Paul and Silas, what was this missionary journey for? It was to expand the gospel, right? The gospel is the good word of Jesus Christ. And so Lydia had no idea, but yet she was a worshiper of God. Interesting, the fact of, you know what, if Lydia would have died before Paul and Silas got there, would she be reunited with her Savior, with God, her Creator? Yes, of course. So the Lord then, of course, now he opened her heart to respond to Paul's message, the message, the good word, the gospel. When she and her members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. I'm going to stop right there for a moment. And uh, actually, I'm going to stop right there, period. Point is, ladies, you are powerful. Men, we have some work to do. Men, we need to stand up. We need to be the ones to lead our families into church, into... I'm not talking about the the building. I'm not talking about, you know what, I'm standing in a parking lot. I'm not talking about church in the building, men. I'm talking about church spiritually. Now, does that mean that your lady cannot lead you in prayer? She can't be a, a powerful force there at home? No, not at all. But you have to be that support, too. And you have to have that desire. And I don't know why, you know, necessarily we don't have the desire. Or do we have the desire, but it's harder uh, for us sometimes, maybe because of ego? Not sure. But I just come out today to say I'm grateful for the ladies, grateful for the, the mothers, grandmothers, daughters, you know, my wife and uh, sisters, etc., etc. Be the Lydia's. Be prepared to go to your place of prayer, as I know many of you are. Today is a pre-election day, right? And many of you have already been stepping up, standing up, and and uh, see your words on Facebook. And I'm thankful for your prayers for our nation. And you know what? I'd like to say the best man will win, but the best deity will win. God's going to win no matter what. So whatever the outcome, somebody just asked me, you know, hey, what are you, uh, how are you going to feel, you know, if your guy doesn't win? I'm like, I'm not going to feel anything. It'll be tragic, I think. We're going to have heartache, hardship. But, you know, if we believe that God is on the throne, then we believe God's on the throne. And no matter what the outcome right? As we see here, God's got a purpose. God's got a plan. It's going to be what's next. What are our actions going to be as, as believers and Christians? You know, it's not going to be what the necessarily the left is. We're not going to go burn things and, and uh, pillage and uh, destroy things and hopefully not and speak foul. You know, we don't need to do that because it's not about our justice. It's God will have his justice one way or the other. Okay. Anyway, enough on that. But uh, have a blessed day. Lydia's, we thank you for leading, for being those pillars of strength and prayer. And we'll talk to you later. All right. Peace.